What is good guys, welcome to a highly requested battery drain test video featuring the P20 Pro and the P20 iPhone 8 Plus Xperia XZ2, a phone we've never featured before on these tests, and of course the S9 Plus. And this time we're jumping straight into it, we're pulling up Shadow Gun Legends, we're jumping into the deep end, this is a demanding game, this is going to push these phones pretty hard. A couple of interesting things to notice, the Huawei P20 Pro has the largest battery capacity of the bunch, by quite a long margin, followed by the S9 Plus. Notice also the very slight resolution difference between the P20 Pro and the P20, in which, curiously, the base P20 ends up being 4 pixels taller. Alright, so after the first session, some differences start to emerge. As expected, the P20 Pro is right at the top of the game, and the iPhone and Xperia phones are already trailing behind quite significantly. Alright, so now we've got Rayman Adventures. Again, not a light game by any means. Probably the most interesting comparison we're going to see in this video is the difference between the P20 Pro and the base P20, because as well as that very slight resolution difference, there's of course a battery capacity difference which is quite significant, but also a display difference. Whilst the P20 Pro is using OLED technology, the P20 has an LCD, which theoretically speaking when you're displaying black pixels should take up a little bit more battery. So yes, things are looking promising for the P20 Pro, but at the same time, we need to bear in mind that both the P20 and the P20 Pro are using a last generation chipset, the Kirin 970, which yes, is still based off a 10 nanometer fabrication process, like the Snapdragon 845, like the Exynos 9810, but unfortunately for Huawei, those latter two chipsets are using a second generation of this process, which should theoretically be a little bit more efficient. Alright, so what we're going to do now is pull up the camera and record some 4K video at 30 frames per second on all the phones. And what we're doing this time is a little bit different. We're first going to record the videos on the phones and then edit them on the phones and see how much battery both those processes together drain. As of now, the iPhone has fallen into a comfortable last position. And the S9 Plus, I'd say, is doing a little bit better than its specifications would suggest, perhaps due in part to the more efficient Exynos 9810 chipset. On a bit of a side note, during this entire editing process, one thing that continuously struck me was how much faster it was on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, a big part of this is probably iOS optimization, but it also demonstrates just how powerful the A11 Bionic chip in that phone is. If you guys have somehow managed to keep an eye on all of these phones, as well as the timer on the right, you might have realised we've just crossed the 2 hour mark. After which it seems like there are almost two bands here. There's the upper band with the P20 Pro and the S9 Plus, both of which I would say are performing remarkably. And then the lower band with the P20, 8 Plus and the XZ2, which I'm going to say are not performing too great. There is almost a 15 percentage point difference between the P20 Pro and the P20 already. So whilst it is easy to assume that both the Huawei phones should have similar levels of battery life, that seems to be far from true. Even though the iPhone has been sitting in last place for some time now, compared to the P20 and the XZ2, its efficiency seems to be much higher. Its raw capacity is much less than those two phones, but in terms of the remaining battery life, it's very much trading blows. It's in the same band as those two devices. Alright, time to switch things up. We're now moving to Afterpulse Elite Army, which is a game that a surprisingly few number of people know of given it's been around for about two years, and it's pretty much the best looking game I think on a mobile device. And it's recently been updated with super high resolution textures and even more advanced lighting effects, which on one hand makes it look great, but also makes it really demanding and great for a battery test. After the next round of checking, it seems like the P20 and the iPhone 8 Plus have hit the 30s, after which from past experience, phones tend to speed up their rate of discharge. Another thing to point out is that even though in terms of size and weight, the iPhone 8 Plus is far from the smallest phone here, it does have the smallest display. We're talking 5.5 inches compared to the other devices here, which have 6.1, 5.8, 5.7 and 6.2. And as the display, which for most of these phones is on close to maximum brightness, is one of the main things that drains battery, display size matters and so having a smaller screen could be one of the explanatory factors as to why the iPhone is doing slightly better than we'd expect it to given its capacity. We've now run a couple of Antutu benchmarks which, as expected in typical Antutu fashion, has accelerated the battery drain process. So we're going to run it a couple more times and I don't think it's going to be long before these phones start hitting single figures. On another little tangent, if you do want to know more about the P20 Pro, I did a pretty in-depth comparison between that phone and the S9 Plus, which launched yesterday and that pretty much summarises my initial thoughts of this phone, which are quite mixed. It's not a perfect phone, but it's definitely a very interesting one. Barely 10 minutes into Sonic Forces, at a total of 3 hours 40 in the test, the P20 gets a low battery warning. That means it's got 10% left. 
only marginally ahead of the iPhone 8 Plus. And amidst the falling figures of the middle three phones, you might have realized the impressive ones of the S9 Plus. This has managed to keep almost complete parity with the P20 Pro, at least so far, even though it's got 500 milliamp hours less of battery capacity. Now this could in part be explained by a slightly lower resolution display and also a more efficient chipset. But even then, this is kind of a surprising result. And speaking of surprising results, the P20 somehow amongst this managed to finish before the iPhone 8 Plus. That's not great. All right, so we've already had a couple of surprises, but we still don't know what's gonna happen between the S9 Plus and the P20 Pro. So what we're gonna do is skip ahead, wait till all the batteries have finished draining, and here are the results. So as you know, the P20 bottled it first, and it scored a time of three hours, 59 minutes. Pretty underwhelming, but somewhat explained by its inefficient LCD panel and last generation chipset. This was followed by the iPhone 8 Plus at four hours, 13 kind of what we expected given its specification, but again, not particularly impressive. The unusual looking Xperia XZ2 only stuck in a little bit longer, scoring four hours 21. But this is starting to move into what I would say is acceptable territory for battery life. And this was succeeded by the Galaxy S9 Plus, which was leaps and bounds ahead, lasting almost exactly five hours. And as expected towards the end, the S9 Plus did start to drain quite a bit faster than the P20 Pro, which left that the king at five hours and 16 minutes. So towards the end, these two phones really did start to diverge. And the P20 Pro is the clear battery drain winner. All right, guys, as I said, if you haven't already seen our comparison between the P20 Pro and the S9 Plus, go check that out. I'm gonna leave it as a card above. If you're new to the channel, it would mean a lot to me if you could smash the subscribe button down below. And with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.